Now, after a rather febrile afternoon, we have a calm and sensible debate. Thank goodness. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 4137 in the name of Ash Denham on neurofibromatosis awareness day. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I know we've got a large gallery. I'm delighted to see you, but can I just say in advance, uh, applaud from the gallery, no matter how much you want to do, it is not permitted. So please desist. I call on Ash Denham to open the debate, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And Thank I'd you. also like to extend a thanks to all the MSPs who have joined me today in recognising World Neurofibromatosis, or NF, Awareness Day. And I want to begin by paying tribute to Beth Beattie, who on the 4th of November last year, sadly passed away at just four years old. I'd like to draw the Chamber's attention to the fact that Beth's parents, Roger and Eva, are here today in the gallery. And so are representatives from the Neuro Foundation and from the Scottish children's charity, Funny Lumps. What we say today, we say in honour of Beth, and it's my hope that by shedding light on this genetic condition, each of us can help raise awareness, ensure diagnoses are made early, and direct people to resources for what can be a devastating disease. It's my hope that by remembering Beth and how hard she fought, we will help set a better path forward for the nearly 30,000 people that are affected by NF in the UK. Many of us here will have heard of Huntington disease, cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy, but not heard of NF. Yet 2.5 million people worldwide are impacted by NF, making it more prevalent than those conditions combined. Too many still remain unaware of what NF is, and what it entails. To put it simply, NF is a gene mutation that can spontaneously develop or be inherited. It causes tumours to grow in the nerve tissue throughout the body and comes in three forms. NF1, a mutation on chromosome 17. NF2 is a mutation on chromosome 22. And there's also a very rare condition called schwannomatosis, and I apologise if I haven't pronounced that correctly. The conditions allow for uncontrollable cell growth and people of any age can suffer from NF with complications developing at any stage of life. And to bring awareness to this disease today, I feel it's important to point out what the signs of NF are so that individuals and medical professionals alike can be vigilant in recognizing it. So signs for NF1 are apparent at birth or shortly afterwards and they include six or more Flat, light brown spots on the skin, often called cafe au lait spots. Clustered freckles in skin folds. Tiny bumps on the iris of the eye and soft bumps on or under the skin and or bone deformities. NF2 is much less common and signs include gradual hearing loss, ringing in the ears, poor balance and headaches. The severity of NF varies for each person but for many, the struggle is physical, mental, and emotional. Take, for example, a young boy or girl with NF who faces challenges in school. For the majority of children with this disease, reading, writing, maths, or even just staying focused in the classroom can be difficult. They might have trouble processing information and then communicating what they've learned. For these kids, putting things in order and making sense of words can be extremely difficult. And when called on to answer a specific question, they might freeze up. And similar tendencies can occur for adults with NF in the workplace. Getting through a class or getting through the workday with NF is hard in and of itself. But that difficulty is increased tenfold if a child's teachers or their classmates or workplace supervisors are not familiar with the disease. When misunderstood, children with NF can feel confused, anxious, frustrated, and then their performance in the classroom may suffer. And as such, it's important for teachers to be aware that as many as 66% of children with NF will have some form of learning problem, and one in four will display autistic tendencies. NF also comes with numerous physical complications, um, that many of which are skin lumps and disfiguring tumours can grow all over the body, including on the optical nerves, which can obviously impact sight, as well as curvature of the, of the spine. 
scoliosis, epilepsy, malformation of long bones, brain and spine tumours are all possible. Women have a fourfold higher risk of breast cancer and there are also higher instances of brain cancer for children that are affected. These physical ailments are compounded by feelings often of embarrassment or insecurity due to the visible lumps and bumps on the body. And as of yet, there is no cure for NF. And that's why we should support organisations like the Neuro Foundation, a charity that works directly with families experiencing NF. It funds the Neuro Foundation Specialist Network, a small group of hospital-based professionals that provide care and guidance for those who are diagnosed with NF. And I'd encourage anyone that's looking for a resource on NF to visit their website, and that's nfauk.org. The charity Funny Lumps works specifically to support children with NF and their families. Family-centric support is especially important since NF is genetic. If someone or their partner has NF, there's a 50% chance that their child will develop NF as well. So imagine being a parent and trying to explain your and your child's symptoms to those who know very little about NF, while also facing the learning and the communication barriers that I described earlier. This can make talking through education or healthcare options very difficult indeed. And as Funny Lump states, every child with NF is different, but we believe that each child should have a tailored prescription of information to assist the teachers in helping that child achieve their full potential. Funny Lumps also holds events for families and children with NF to meet up, connect and talk about their experiences and support each other. And you can learn more about them on their website, which is funnylumps.org. As Neuro Foundation and Funny Lumps are here today, I'd encourage anybody that wants any more information to join us in um, Q103 after the debate. Um, truly, one of the greatest challenges of NF is this uncertainty of the disease coupled with a lack of public awareness. And I've seen this myself as one of my staff members has an eight-year-old son with NF and she's often had to deal with medical professionals who have never even heard of the condition. A constituent of mine also wrote to me, Shirley Stanners, and she told me about her son Thomas who has NF. He's gone through three major surgeries and a lack of full understanding from their GP has been a bit of a barrier, particularly for Thomas to get cleared to go back to work after he was medically discharged from his apprenticeship. Because of this unawareness, children and individuals with NF may not be properly diagnosed and children and families may not get the proper resources and support that they need. And that's why today's debate highlighting World NF Awareness Day is so critical. Awareness is a core solution to effective support of those who have NF. And if each of us simply listen, learn and pass on what we know, then this will help. And I'm very grateful to my fellow MSPs who will be speaking today and bringing this much needed awareness to NF. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Denham. I call Kenneth Gibson, who followed by Donald Cameron. Mr. Gibson, Thank you, please. Presiding Officer. And first of all, I want to thank Ash Denham for lodging this motion and securing time on an issue which undoubtedly deserves the increased awareness offered by this debate. Uh, and I would also like to thank Ash Denham for explaining in detail just exactly what NF is as a disease and, and how it manifests itself. Effect it affects one in two and a half thousand people, so more than two thousand here in Scotland, the neurofibromatosis is an unpredictable and variable condition caused by genetic mutation in one gene. And as a progressive multi-system condition, it impacts on many areas of a sufferer's life, not just health. And in this respect, over 60% of patients with NF1 will have learning difficulties and may struggle at school, particularly as awareness of the illness is comparatively low. Uh, NF is uh, one of the most common genetic disorders, uh, but remains relatively unknown. Uh, even amongst the medical profession, the sufferers often having to explain their condition to GPs. Now, due to the la this lack of awareness, there is concern that those affected may not receive the correct treatment as quickly as they ought to. And this is, of course, true uh, of four-year-old Beth Beattie, who Ash Denham touched on and who sadly passed away on 4th of November 2016 due to uh, brain tumours caused by this condition. Uh, and I know that best friends and family, including our parents, Roger and Eva, are, are present uh, here today, as Ash Denham commented. And I'd like to offer my sincere condolences uh, and will do my utmost to do uh, your daughter's story uh, justice. 
In the first 10 months of her life, doctors failed to diagnose Beth with NF1 four times as due to its unpredictability, there exists very little research into how severely the condition may present itself. In addition, in Beth's case, there was no family history of NF, making this a spontaneous mutation. Understandably, her parents had never heard of the condition prior to their daughter's eventual diagnosis at 10 months old. Like Beth, about half of the people who suffer from NF have no family history of the condition, and it occurs out of the blue, with no one else in the family being affected increasing the likelihood for it not to be diagnosed. Despite her condition, Beth's six-monthly visits to a paediatrician remained relatively positive. However, after a trip to A&E in November 2015, an MRI scan previously deemed unnecessary due to lack of physical symptoms revealed two large brain tumours. To quote Beth's, Beth's parents directly, devastated doesn't cover it. Heartbroken doesn't touch the physical pain you feel when you receive news like this. Indeed, I doubt there are any words which could accurately describe such feelings. Despite four operations, a routine MRI later revealed that the tumours were growing, with doctors giving Beth just weeks to live. After a long and brave battle, Beth passed away at home seven months later. She was only four years old. As her parents rightly expressed, this should not be. Yet, in many cases, this is the harsh reality of NF. When discussing conditions such as this, it is all too easy to focus on facts and figures. It is important that we remember that behind each of these figures is a face, a personal account of someone suffering from NF and the support system of family and friends also feeling the effects of this unpredictable condition. Therefore, raising awareness is of the utmost importance for fostering hope in the NF community, not only for sufferers but also their families and carers who provide support. Doing just that as a group of dedicated volunteers who have been fundraising in Beth Beatty's name, calling themselves Team Beth. They keep her spirit alive in one of the best ways possible, by helping others. Earlier this year, I was delighted to present a cheque, along with Team Beth, for £13,300 to Memories Are Better Than Dreams, a charity aiming to fulfil end-of-life wishes for children and their families in Ayrshire and supporting them through the loss of a child. Team Beth is continuing their fundraising efforts with the current total on their My Donate page reaching more than £16,500 and counting. Presenting officer, while there is yet no known cure for NF, as people are born with it due to a genetic mutation, this does not mean nothing can be done to aid those who suffer from it. Before her eventual diagnosis, Beth was seen by numerous medical professionals who failed to identify it. I hope this debate promotes increased awareness amongst medical professionals and the public alike. Best story of a repeatedly missed NF1 diagnosis is all too common. However, awareness alone is not enough to save a life. We must also call for regular MRI scans to be offered to those living with NF, as that is the only thing that can potentially provide Beth with a greater chance of survival. In addition, access to specialist centres dealing with NF are increasingly difficult to obtain. While charities such as the Neuro Foundation seek to extend an NF support network, this is not UK yet UK-wide. Consequently, I urge it to honour the memory of the incredibly determined Beth Beattie and many, many others who like her who struggled or continue to struggle with NF. Patients should receive regular routine monitoring by specialists. We cannot afford to overlook this condition and the devastating impacts it can have. Thank you very much, Mr Gibson. Donald Cameron, to be followed by Colin Smith. Mr Cameron, please. Thank you, Deb thank you Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd firstly like to thank Ash Denham for raising this particular subject because it's a condition that as her motion states, very few people actually know about. I myself certainly fall into that category or did before this debate. For instance, I've learned that it's estimated that around one in 3,000 people are currently diagnosed with the NF1 variant of the condition, yet many people remain undiagnosed, so that number may be greater. I learned about the, the NF2 variant being less prevalent and the rarest variant of all, schwannomatosis, which affects around one in 40,000 people. I also discovered that the Neuro Foundation estimates that around 2.5 million people worldwide have a form of NF, which is clearly a significant number. But as other speakers have already said, lack of knowledge of the condition is an issue for medical professionals too. And as the motion acknowledges, it's often the case that people who suffer from a form of NF or have children who have it often find themselves having to explain the condition to their GP. Now, in this respect, I don't wish to criticise GPs, given the important and difficult job that they do. But it must be important for our medical professionals to be aware of such conditions, particularly the early signs or symptoms, in order to provide swifter treatment and improve the quality of life. 
of the patient. Which is why a debate like this is so critical and is one way in which this parliament can act for the greater good of the country by discussing a condition like NF in this chamber and hopefully in the media. We can raise its profile both amongst the public but also within the medical professions, within government and health policy organisations. One of the most important aspects of this debate then is that by highlighting the condition in its varying forms, we can urge health boards to ensure that all medical professionals are aware of the symptoms of the condition. And Nash Denham gave some of those details in, in her contribution. It's also fundamentally important to raise awareness of the different organisations that offer support and advice to people with the condition and their families. And I too would like to pay tribute to the Neuro Foundation, who, as they say, enable people concerned about NF to find solutions appropriate to them and, importantly, facilitate research. In particular, their new friend's wall is a superb tool for people who live with a condition and their relatives and friends to share experiences and meet others with NF. Looking closer to home, I too would like to pay tribute to the Scottish charity Funny Lumps, who support children with NF and their families. Their engaging approach to this condition is particularly remarkable, given that they offer home visits to support families and school visits to support teachers who have a child in the classroom who suffers from some of the various side effects of the condition. They also host family events, which allow children with the same condition to meet each other. This is fundamentally important for children with such a condition, because it's not only a social opportunity, but it lets a child know that they aren't alone or unique in this situation. Deputy Presiding Officer, the one aspect of this motion that I haven't touched on but would like to close with is to mention Beth Beatty. This brave young child from Air was one of those children who live with a form of NF. And I was very saddened to hear that she passed away last November. And I add my condolences to those that have already been offered. But it is testament to her short life that over £13,000 was raised for charity by her family and many volunteers. And I'd also like to acknowledge the work of Kenny Gibson for his role in promoting this. Her memory should not be forgotten. In fact, it should prompt us and remind us that there are hundreds of people in Scotland living with a form of NF and indeed many others who remain undiagnosed. And the challenge is to raise awareness and I hope that this debate today will help achieve that. Thank you very much, Mr Cameron. Call Colin Smith to be followed by Jamie Green. Mr Smith, please. <clears throat> thank you, President Officer. Can I echo the comments of others in congratulating and thanking Ash Denham both for tabling the motion about neurofibromatosis awareness day, but also securing this debate on awareness day itself. I was just reflecting on Ash Denham's opening comments and also Kenny Gibson's, I think, very moving reflections. Um, at the weekend, like many members, I was back in my constituency with my family. I spent part of that time at home planning a party for um, a few weeks time to celebrate the birthday of one of my two daughters, Hannah. She's decided she wants to have her birthday party at Jamur Farm Ice Cream, exactly what the attraction of a, a farm that produces hundreds of different types of ice cream is, I don't really know. But um, on the day of her birthday, Hannah's going to be um, four years old. It's the same age as little Beth was when she passed away in November last year. I can't begin to imagine how utterly devastating, how heartbreaking that must have been for Beth's parents. And to lose your little girl at such a young age is something that's simply unimaginable. So I'd like to, to add my condolences to those um, of, of others today. But when you listen to, to Kenny Gibson's uh, comments and you read the, the local newspapers in Ayrshire, I suspect that through that heartbreak and through that devastation, there must also be an awful lot of pride for Beth's parents when they see the amazing fundraising that Beth inspired. Such fundraising is, of course, not only raising badly needed funds for good causes, it's also raising awareness of NF, which is incredibly important. Personally, until recently, I was largely unaware of NF. Prior to, to being elected to Parliament, I worked for a charity called Parkinson's UK and I'd come across various reports asking whether there were links between different neurological conditions, including NF and Parkinson's. But until this week, I was completely unaware that NF is one of the world's most common neurogenetic conditions, with NF1 affecting one in every 25,000 people worldwide, including around 2,500 in the UK. And NF2, although much less common, still affecting one in every 30,000 people worldwide, with over 1,000 people affected in the UK. I also wasn't aware of the way in which NF1 can manifest itself in so many different ways, with tumours that grow in the nerves inside the body and on the skin, often leading to severe disability, pain, itching, cancers, epilepsy, high blood pressure, 
bone abnormalities, speech and language problems, dyspraxia, learning and behavioural difficulties, as well as various mental health issues. The problem with lack of awareness is that it leads to a lack of understanding, not just from the public, but also from health, education and public service professionals, the very people who we need to know how to respond to those with the condition requiring help and support. That can mean, as, as Ash Denham's motion highlights, people going undiagnosed until many of the, the disadvantages of the condition have already become entrenched. And if people aren't diagnosed until after they become parents themselves, they may un have un unwittingly pass the condition on. So I hope when, when replying to today's debate, the Minister will be able to, to inform members just how the government thinks it can possibly raise awareness of NF among our healthcare professionals. I also hope that the Minister will outline the government's thoughts on one of the suggested solutions to the problems of diagnosis, namely the use of the personal child health record at the so-called Red Book, which as members will know is the national standard health and development record given to parents at a child's birth. Parents retain the Red Book and health professionals update the record each time the child is seen in a healthcare setting. Adding checks relating to birthmarks to the content of the record and providing appropriate awareness to healthcare professionals would, I'm sure, when it came to diagnosis, diagnosing NF, uh, become something that maybe becomes a bit more accurate at an earlier age. And I hope the Minister will lend her support to that. I hope she'll also respond to the, the, the calls made by Kenny Gibson and others for a, a so-called centre of excellence in Scotland. While there are two fantastic specialist centres in England, Manchester and Guy's and St Thomas's, there are none in Scotland and understandably there have been calls for a specialist NF clinic to be established here in Edinburgh. Presiding officer, in concluding, although like many others I've used my short contribution to highlight the issue of a lack of awareness, I want to end by paying tribute to those doctors, nurses and other clinicians in the NHS who do play such a critical role in providing help to patients affected by this condition. I'd also pay tribute to the work of the organisations mentioned by Ash Denham, namely Neuro Foundation and Funny Lumps, two small charities, but who are clearly punching above their weight when it comes to championing the cause of people with NF. I also want to pay tribute to the families and carers of those with NF who are so truly dedicated to supporting their loved ones. But most importantly, I want to pay tribute to all those who live or have lived with this condition and bear that condition with such bravery. As a result of today's debate, I'm sure we're all that bit better aware of their cause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Smith. I call Jamie Green as the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Green, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Presiding, Presiding Officer. Um, I have no doubt uh, today that there's pretty much nothing that I can say in this chamber that will ease the pain uh, of losing a child. Often parliaments get caught up in the sheer politics of, of it all. I think today was a good example of that. But we really are brought back down to earth by the realities of a real life story that crosses our path. Uh, in one of the most difficult surgeries I've held in my one year as an MSP, I sat and heard the best story through the words of her mum, Eva. And we are today, or I am certainly here today, primarily because of Beth. And a lack of knowledge of this condition contributed to the 10 months that it took for Beth to receive a full and proper uh, diagnosis. Opportunities missed and time lost. And may I share the condolences shared by uh, Kenny Gibson today uh, to the family but I do so in the hope that out of this tragedy comes some positive actions. We're here today to debate uh, and raise awareness of this disease so that those watching in the gallery or at home know that we are taking this seriously. Uh, we'll all be aware of the complications that newer conditions can bring. And as with any condition, the quicker the diagnosis, the better the chance the patient has of receiving the correct treatment. But the problem is the symptoms of NF aren't always obvious. And this can be a real challenge for doctors and nurses, uh, nurses who might diagnose those symptoms for something else. But today is not about laying blame in any way. It is about raising awareness. I'm very thankful to Ash Denham for bringing this motion forward. Uh, her motion highlights that parents often find themselves in the position of telling their GPs what the condition is, despite this being the world's most common neurogenetic condition, as Colin Smith pointed out. Now, neurogenetic conditions typically require very specialist medical training, but with a more common condition such as NF, it is necessary to look at how we can better educate medical pr practitioners on the simple everyday signs to look out for. After all, they are the front line in diagnosis. I'd like to reiterate three simple observations 
uh, from the debate today. Uh, the first is, why is NF not included in the so-called Red Book or the personal child health record, which is used to keep a record of a child's health details, such as growth patterns, reviews, and immunizations? Having something as simple as listing the possible causes of those symptoms in the Red Book could go a long way into reaching a diagnosis sooner rather than later. It is worth pointing out that there are two specific NF centres in England, one in Manchester and one in London. Uh, there is no dedicated centre in Scotland. The charity Funny Lumps has suggested that uh, rather than children under 16 being seen by medics who may have little or no knowledge of the condition, uh, a Scotland-wide NF clinic might make more sense. I think that is uh, food for thought. My third point today is around research, uh, which is another point I'd quickly like to touch on before I close. Uh, many millions are spent on the research of other more well-known diseases, uh, but so much more can be done on NF, on NF. Organizations such as the Neuro Foundation are there to support and promote medical research, but they are just the tip of the iceberg. What additional focus could we put on research? Now, unfortunately for Beth, her condition was discovered late, and her story is one of the most severe that the NF community has encountered. But there are many others in Scotland and across the UK whose lives to whom we can make a difference. Many of them don't even know they have NF, and many of them may not even be born yet. So once again, I'd like to thank Ash Denham for bringing this debate forward. I'd also like to thank her parliamentary aide, Abigail Lawson, who has worked tirelessly uh, to coordinate this debate, provide us briefings, and also get enough cross-party support to allow us to have this discussion today. I wish Team Beth the very best in their fundraising efforts. I may be uh, persuaded to walk over hot coals in their forthcoming fundraiser. I'll do it if Kenny Gibson does it. Okay, well, that's, that's agreed then. I'm sure I'll find an excuse between now and then not to, but... Uh, I hope the Scottish Government will reflect on many of the comments made in the Chamber this evening and out of this formulate some action plans to come out uh, so that we can raise awareness further of, of this uh, uh, important issue. Thank you. I have to say neither you nor Mr Gibson can back out now. We have many, many witnesses to promising to do it and it's also on the official report. So I look forward to the video. Um, I now call uh, Aileen Campbell, Minister, to close for the Government. Seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and I too, like other members, uh, am very uh, happy to take part in this debate and to close for the Government. Uh, but before I start, I'd also, like other members, uh, would like to offer my condolences to the family of Beth Beattie, clearly a very brave little girl who had a very difficult fight in her too short life. And I'd also like to commend her parents, Roger and Eva, for their tireless fundraising work for Memories Are Better Than Dreams that charity that helps families make special memories with their children towards the end of their life. And as a mother as well of two, two wee boys, I just cannot, like Colin Smith uh, mentioned, cannot imagine the pain of seeing your wee one uh, go through so much. And again, I put on record how inspiring Roger and Eva are, how brave and courageous also in terms of sharing their experience of what they've gone through. And in honour of wee Beth, we must resolve as a parliament to see where we can make uh, improvements. And again, uh, I think Kenny Gibson is right when he states that uh, figures and statistics belie the fact that behind every figure and behind every statistics are people and people's suffering, people's pain, people's experiences and, and the grief that we need to do uh, something uh, to make things uh, better and to make the improvements where we can. And again, I'd also like to uh, commend Ash Denham for bringing this uh, debate forward, to be, especially because today is Neurofibromatosis Awareness Day. And I'm incredibly encouraged to see so many people showing their support right across the parliament. Uh, and this government continues to be supportive of the charities that do so much important work to raise awareness of this uh, rare uh, disease. Funny Lumps and others have been mentioned this evening and their innovative work is greatly appreciated by the Scottish government. And Ash Denham is absolutely right to raise awareness of this condition and not just what the impact is, but the, to articulate and outline the impact of this emotionally and mentally, whether that's a young child struggling at school or someone perhaps in their adolescence coping with how the condition makes them look. 
And that's why we must ensure that the structures that we have in place kick in, make sure that families feel supported, and then that, we, that when we talk about our, our national approach to children's services, getting it right for every child, that that is felt and is true for children that have NF. Furthermore, our health and social care delivery plan published in December last year sets out our aim for Scotland to provide high quality services, which includes a focus on early intervention and supported self-management. Alongside this, our approach to personalised care is outlined by the Chief Medical Officer in her report, Realising Realistic Medicine. And we need to ensure again that the approaches, the approaches that we take to ensure that people feel empowered and supported are true for those with NF, that awareness is raised and that appropriate and timely intervention happens when it's most needed. The Scottish Government uh, has also published the Rare Disease Implementation Plan. It's not rare to have a rare disease in response to the delivering the commitments to the UK Rare Disease Strategy. And that aims to improve diagnosis, access and coordinated service provision and to facilitate work with research communities. But more specifically in relation to uh, NF, the NHS National Services Division NSD commissions access to specialist services through service agreements with NHS England and accordingly there is free access to specialist treatment for all residents of Scotland with complex NF1. However, not all people diagnosed with NF1 will require that highly specialised care. In Scotland, the genetic services make the diagnosis of NF, provide the person with information and make arrangements for follow-up and ongoing management. The need for annual follow-up and what is required and who to contact with the requiries is recorded in a letter to the GP as well as correspondence uh, to the patient. And we absolutely recognise that day-to-day, -day, a young person living with neurofibromatosis will need support out with those highly specialised services. And I understand that periodic genetic reviews are offered so any issues, including education issues, can be recognised and addressed. And at every stage, clinicians in primary and secondary care are also made aware that if they or the person has any concerns, that they can request a genetic review. Again, awareness raising of the condition is so important so that our medical professionals, eh, particularly those eh, general practitioners and others as well that have that general knowledge around healthcare, eh, have a heightened awareness of eh, NF. And of course, we also recognise, taking cognizance of everybody's views eh, and contributions this evening, that that awareness raising eh, needs to be felt more keenly and we'll look and see where improvement can be made. In relation to NF2, um, genetic testing for Scottish patients is available from Sheffield Genetic Diagnostic Service. And NSD have an agreement with NHS England which enables clinicians and patients access to the specialist NF2 service. And this clinic can advise on disease management and treatment op options. Moreover, and additionally, uh, the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde hosts a specialist NF2 clinic. And the clinical team is interested in providing a nationally designated service for Scotland. And the feasibility of this is currently being considered by NSD with the help of the Managed Service Network for Neurosurgery. And the hope is to form a patient pathway to improve access to that specialist support and coordination of care for this group of patients. And again, we'll make sure that NSD have a, a, a close understanding of the interests that members have taken on this uh, topic and make sure that their considerations, that they, the contributions made this evening uh, feed into their considerations. Research, though, was another issue that was raised by members and research into rare diseases is absolutely vital. And it's through, because it's through that research that we'll learn more about rare diseases, how they occur, how to diagnose them and how to treat them effectively and correctly. And again, that helps with that general awareness raising that our medical professionals require. And it's also through research that we learn people's views on how they want to manage their disease and where they want to do that. The Cabinet Secretary announced on Rare Disease Day that the launch of the Rare Diseases Genomics a study by the Scottish Genomes Partnership in collaboration with Genomics a England. And that study will see over 300 people with rare genetic or difficult to diagnose diseases and their close family members offered the opportunity to have their entire genetic code sequenced. And this will help people receive a quicker diagnosis. And this study, along with other ongoing work, is a significant uh, milestone towards uh, achieving this. And that important work is the key to ensuring that we deliver the best possible care and support for people with rare diseases, uh, including NF. Furthermore, the European Commission is required to support member states in the development of European reference networks or ERNs. And the purpose of ERNs is to provide better access for patients to highly specialised care and to improve the po and pool knowledge for clinicians, which will aid diagnosis and care in an area where expertise is rare. 
And that type of collaboration will enhance adoption of innovations in medical service, health technologies, enable knowledge to be shared, not just right across the UK, but across Europe as a whole, helping with conditions like NF and enhancing our knowledge of how this condition manifests itself and the ways in which we need to respond to that knowledge. The EU has approved 24 ERNs that cover such uh, uh, cover areas such as rare bone disorders, paediatric cancers and genetically inherited conditions. Seven hospitals in Scotland and 102 hospitals in the rest of the UK will be directly participating in these networks. In response as well though to the calls for more routine uh, MRI scan, again we can take that up and follow on to the members more specifically. Our understanding is that this type of condition, because it can manifest itself in different ways and therefore has uh, different investigations or treatment options may be appropriate for different patients, uh, the undertaking of an MRI scan is a de decision for the clinicians involved based on the needs of that patient. But again, we'll take on board the points that were made. But again, it's that clini clinical, um, clinical decision making that is so important. But again, though, we need to make sure that the uh, understanding and knowledge of this condition is much more visible and much more keenly felt so that we can get the right uh, support at the right time. So to conclude, uh, uh, presiding officer, Beth's story and her bravery that has inspired so much money to be raised, uh, the, the great joy that she brought in her four short years is the inspiration that I think we will use tonight to ensure greater awareness and greater understanding of this condition. And we'll continue to explore ways in which we can make the difference that I'm sure Beth parents want us to and which honours Beth's uh, memory uh, as well. So again, thank you to Ash Denham for raising this uh, uh, debate in the Parliament to the members who contributed and again to the support that's clearly felt across uh, in the public gallery as well and we'll continue to work with everyone to make the difference that I think we all want. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I close this session of Parliament.